Hi, welcome to LHS 610. Today we'll be talking about analyzing health text data. We'll start off with some announcements. We'll then talk through some common health text analysis tasks. We'll talk about how to read in text data, because text data typically doesn't live in data frames, it's often found in files, and so you need to handle it a little bit differently. We'll talk about tidying text data. How do you clean it up to be able to start to do some basic analytics? We'll talk about how you figure out what words are important um, in the text using something called TF-IDF, which I'll define later in this lecture. And then we'll also talk about how to find important phrases. And it'll be very similar to how you find important words except at the very beginning, instead of breaking the document up into words, you'll break it up into phrases. The packages we'll be using today include read text, uh, tidy text, and stringer. Stringer comes pre-installed with tidyverse, but the other two packages you'll need to install and library in separately in order for the uh, code to work uh, in this talk. So let's start by talking about how to read in text data. Now, so far, remember that we've been taking advantage of the reader package, which comes with tidyverse. And it has a function read underscore CSV, which is our preferred function for reading in uh, .csv files. Unfortunately, text data is rarely found as a field within a CSV file. Um, and that happens to be because typically, you know, when people write text, they don't think of their text as being data. So they'll often store it to a, you know, a series of text files, um, or, you know, it'll be like files on the web that you're trying to kind of scrape the text out of. And so text data is rarely going to be loadable in using the default read underscore CSV function because of the way it's typically found. And typically the way it's found is not in a single text file, but rather uh, in a series of different files where each file denotes you know, a document of some sort, whether that's a patient note or whether that is a web page, et cetera. So it's not in a single file. It's typically spread across multiple files where each file represents a document. And so we can take advantage of the read text function in the read text package to read in multiple files, but we do have to specify which files we want to be read in. So one of the homework assignments, uh, assignment six includes a train dash data uh, zip file. If you unzip it, you'll notice that there's a directory called train dash data. And so what I'm doing here is using R to first library in the read text package, and then to use R's directory function, dir, just to see what's inside of the uh, train-data folder. This line of code only works because the train-data folder is a subfolder inside of the folder where my R markdown document is sitting. If my train-data folder was somewhere else on my computer, I would need to specify the full file path here uh, so that the uh, R code knows where to find it. So what you'll notice is that this train-data folder contains uh, one file and five folders. And so we can ignore that file, but the five folders are you know, the different specialties uh, of notes uh, which are stored in there. And the source of this data is a medical transcription kind of set of samples that are sample notes uh, for a variety of different uh, types of encounters uh, with patients uh, in these five uh, different specialties. So let's start by reading in the urology notes. So I started by first naming the files that I would like to read in. So I create an object called urology files, and within it, I set the, uh, a vector that contains all the file names. So in order to get that vector out, I use the same dir function, but now I specify that I want to only look at those notes uh, or those documents that are sitting inside of the train data folder 
in the urology subfolder. Um, I set recursive equals true, and what that does is if there were any other subfolders within the urology folder, it would actually um, look inside of all those folders as well to find any additional files. In this case, there's no, there are no subfolders, so it's not required. But this is just to give you an idea. That this is a helpful argument to set if you have additional subfolders that you would also like to read and extract files from. I put in full.names equals true, which makes sure that um, the vector I get back contains not only the file names, but also the file path so that I can directly read it in. And then I gave it a pattern, which uh, was .txt. And that's because there happens to be a .ini file inside of the urology subfolder. And I don't really consider that to be a note. So all of the notes end with .txt, which is why I was able to supply it, this pattern. And when I do that, this creates a vector of files that come from the urology subfolder, and it stores it into this object called urology underscore files. Next, I use uh, the read text function, and I uh, give it this vector of file names from urology files, and then I store that to urology underscore data. And urology underscore data is basically a data frame where there are two columns. The first column is doc underscore ID, which contains the names of the files because that's kind of like a unique documentation or a document ID number. And then in the second column, it's called text. It contains the actual text uh, of that uh, document. So here you're only seeing part of one document, but you know if you were to uh, zoom in on this and, and open up just that one document, uh, 1009.txt, you could read the whole operative note uh, and see what's going on here. And if you look carefully here, you can also see there's appears to be some embedded HTML here. Like there's this less than B greater than B, you know, uh, sign, which basically says that the word procedure should be bolded and it should, that bolding should end right after the word procedure where you see the less than slash B and then greater than sign because that's the closing tag. So anyways, this will just be, I'm bringing that up because when we go to analyze this, we might see that B start popping up in other places because it's going to be very common um, in these notes uh, to have HTML tags unless we explicitly remove them. So let's go ahead and just take a look at that first note. So I basically said urology data slice one, and you'll see that the document ID is 1009.txt. And on the Slide here, it actually prints out really nicely. Instead of seeing those uh, you know, bolded tags, you'll just see the words bolded where the tags are, you know, are there. So the word procedure here appears in bold, as does the word preoperative diagnosis and postoperative diagnosis. But if we look at, you know, take a cl closer look at this, we can basically see this is a procedure note for an elective male uh, bilateral vasectomy. And so you can kind of read through it. And they basically say what was done during the surgery. If we take a look at the next uh, sample note in urology, we can see this also appears to be uh, a bilateral vasectomy note. And so some of the words are a little bit different and the description of the procedure might be slightly different, but it's you know, gonna be relatively similar in content um, as that prior note. Now, even though the word neurology sounds pretty similar to the word urology, and they're only two letters different, um, you probably know that neurology is a very different specialty than urology. And so if we wanted to figure out, well, what are different about these specialties, you know, what we might want to do is create a similar data frame that contains neurology data, and then try to compare the neurology notes with the urology notes based on their content. So I'm doing all the same things here. I'm creating a vector called neurology files. That's a character vector and contains a name of the full file names for all of the documents inside of the train data folder in the neurology subfolder. And then I'm using read text to be able to read this into a data frame 
And again, that data frame has two columns, doc ID, which is the document ID, and text, which contains the text of the, of the actual documents. So similarly, we can take a look at the first neurology note by just taking the neurology data and slicing one. And you'll see the doc ID here is 1001.txt. If you open that txt file on your computer, you'll see this same text. Um, and similarly, you'll see that you know some of the words are bolded, and that bolding is being accomplished by the HTML tag that is associated with the word B, or the letter B. Um, this note looks to be uh, a very young person, 27-year-old right-handed uh, uh, female who experienced a sudden word-finding difficulty um, and slurred speech, and that sounds like there's concern for a stroke. And if you look at the dates here, it seems to be kind of centered around 1996, so there's a lot of 96 uh, sprinkled throughout this note. So this is kind of a uh, history and physical. Uh, there's a hospital course of what's been done so far. Uh, there's some lab testing. And then if you go to the very bottom, it says, you know, she was discovered um, to have, let's see what was the ultimate uh, diagnosis. Vasculitis, um, and so she, which is a inflammation of the blood vessels, and shows she was started on immune suppression with this drug called cytoxan, um, and that's a very, very rare kind of complicated situation, uh, especially for someone so young. So you look at the second note, um, and this is document one zero one six dot txt. Um, this is someone who has uh, known hydrocephalus, hydrocephalus is where the ventricles in your brain uh, appear to be large, oftentimes because they're not emptying as well, um, occasionally for other reasons. And so this is someone who's kind of being followed up here. And you can have a variety of symptoms of that. You know, this, this person was having uh, head fullness, ringing in the ears. Um, but you get a sense that, you know, these notes look very different than... Uh, the notes for the urology patients. So I might, you know, try to have you think about how would you tell these notes apart uh, if you were to feed them into an algorithm? You know, could you tell apart what's a urology note from a neurology note? Um, and to do it at the document level is not really possible. We've got to break this document up into smaller pieces. So the rest of the lecture, uh, on this part of things is going to be about how would we tell these two types of notes apart based on these documents that we have. So first let's actually just label the notes and combine them. And the way I'm going to label them here is in urology data I'm going to create a new column called type and assign it the value urology so that each row has a, a type of urology. And then for neurology data I'm going to add a variable called type uh, and store the value neurology in it. So that variable type will always tell me what type of note it was. I'm going to combine these by using bind rows. Um, you wouldn't want to join these together because these are actually uh, totally different documents. There's no way to you know join them together. It's not as if we know you know that one of these patients um, is the same patient between these two specialties. So the way we actually combine them is we vertically stack them and we do that by binding rows using the bind rows function from dplyr. So we store that value to combined notes, which is a new data frame. And when we take a look at that, we can see that um, it has 258 rows, which means there are 258 separate notes, um, with some of which are urology and some of which are neurology. Um, and here we're only looking at the top few, and we can see that the top few are all urology notes because we bound those first. So we might be tempted to ask this question of what words are most common in urology versus neurology as a way to try to differentiate the urology and neurology notes. I mean, 
when we read the notes, the words that kind of stuck out at us, like bilateral vasectomy, were very different in urology notes uh, as compared to uh, neurology notes, which talked a lot about, more about you know mental status and you know things about neurological symptoms. So hopefully the common words will help us out. And even though I called them words, in natural language processing terminology, we often refer to these as tokens rather than words. And tokens can be words, but tokens can also be phrases. Um, and so, you know, or it can even be sentences or paragraphs. So when we say we want to break a document into words, the language we often use is in, in NLP or natural language processing is that we're going to tokenize this documents, this document into uh, words. And so this is called tokenization and you can tokenize text into paragraphs, sentences, what we call engrams, which are fixed length phrases or into words. And the default operation is usually to break it up into words. So let's start by tokenizing the notes into words. So in order to do this, we need to make use of the tidy text function. And what we'll do is, we, sorry, the tidy text package. And inside of the tidy text package, there is a function called unnest underscore tokens. And there is a good reason for why it's called that, but I won't get into that reasoning. Um, because that reasoning um, was initiated by a larger kind of uh, discussion around nested data frames. But in any case, if you take the combined notes data frame and then you unnest its tokens, the default functionality is to break it up into words. And so the two things I need to tell it are what to call the new column that's going to contain those words and which column I actually need to break up into the words. So the first argument in unnest tokens is a column that currently do does not exist that I'm calling into existence, uh, you know, kind of like gather. And the second argument is a column that currently does exist, which is the column that I want to break up um, and separate into the words. So if I store that result to a data frame called tokenized notes, and I take a look at that data frame, what you'll see here is that my tokenized note of you know 1009.txt has now been broken up into words. And so this document um, is no longer contained within one row. It now takes up several rows where each row is a word. And if you remember that the word procedure was preceded by a uh, bolded tag, which is a less than sign B and then a, gr a greater than sign. And then it had a bold tag at the end of it. You can see how that B got into the picture here because it says B and then procedure, B and then elective. And while there are ways I could have removed those HTML tags, I happened to not do that. And so that's why this tag uh, became like a frequent word that I'm going to see um, when I look for common words uh, in these documents. The other thing to take a quick note of is that if you look at the number of observations, my original combined notes data frame had, I think, 258 rows. And the tokenized notes data frame has 130,000 rows because it's one row per word as opposed to being one row per document. If you're trying to say, well, did, haven't we done something like this before? The closest thing I can think of to you know, this kind of functionality is the separate rows function, which basically was a way of separating a field into multiple rows based on a separator. And I have a feeling if you use the separate rows function here, you could probably recreate this fairly closely, this output. But the magic of the unnest tokens function is that it's using the tokenizer package, which you know has fairly you know simple rules when you're talking about tokenizing words, but when you want to tokenize into sentences or paragraphs or some other unit, um, it is a lot more powerful and a lot quicker. 
than to use the separate rows function. But you could mostly get this output by using the separate rows function we learned about uh, earlier in the course. OK, so now that we've got our data frame tokenized into words, let's take a look at it. So we can see here that basically um, it's the same exact content as our original note. But if you look at the first 10 rows, each row is one word. So that includes our HTML tags, this B. But then it says, you know, procedure, elective male sterilization via bilateral vasectomy. So this is just our exact same note, just separated into rows for each word. The type is preserved, so it's urology. And we can see that all of these rows have the same doc ID because they're all derived from the same document. But of course, if we went further down and we sliced, you know, you know, uh, like 10,000 uh, rows in, this would be obviously a separate document and not all the same document throughout. I kind of already answered this, um, and you actually can't tell on this slide because um, the procedure word has been bolded already, and you can't see that there's there's a uh, B tag before and after it. But the letter B is really common because of that bold tag. And similarly, any other HTML tags that are used might show up as tokens uh, in our uh, in our data frame. So let's look at the most common words overall. So the five most common words overall are the, and, be, was, and something else that I can't see because it's being overwritten by the Michigan logo. Um, but it looks like it's probably a short word. So in any case, you might have thought, well, maybe these words will be helpful and give us the nice breadth of the fact that we're looking at urology and neurology notes. But no, it turns out that the most common words um, are almost like filler words that aren't very helpful, um, that are you know, just commonly used in the English language. So common words appear not to be very helpful here uh, when we're looking at words. And we can see that the word the shows up like 7,000 times, uh, which is not that surprising. Now we might ask, OK, so overall, we know that the most common word is the. But what if we're looking at comparing the most common words in urology versus neurology notes? So what I've done here is I've started with tokenized notes. I've grouped by type and word. Remember that type is either going to be urology and neurology. So there's only kind of two types that are possible. And then I'll, word is every possible word that appears. And then I've counted up the unique combinations of type and word using the summarize n equals n. And then I grouped by type, arranged the counts in descending order, and I said slice one through five. And I can see that the most common neurology words are the, and, b, of, and two. And the common urology words are the, was, and, b, and, of. So again, kind of struck out here. And obviously, I could go further down uh, beyond the top five to find those kind of words that I think are going to be important, like vasectomy or you know bilateral um, or similar words that you know tell me what what the procedure is. But it appears that you know the top five most common words are not those words. If you look closely in the code, you'll see that I put next to the group by type function, uh, that this is an optional line of code. You don't actually need it. And the reason I put that there is just as a reminder that when you go ahead and summarize um, in the line above that, you actually peel off one layer of grouping every time you summarize. So when I grouped by type and word, and I did summarize, my data frame is still grouped by type because only the word grouping got peeled off. If that's something that you don't remember, um, you can always regroup by the thing you want to regroup by. And so I added a group by type here just to remind myself that I want to group by type before I do the slice one through five. But when you are grouped by multiple things and then you go ahead and summarize, it only peels off one layer of grouping. 
So consequently, if you were grouped by three things and then you did a summarize, you would still be grouped by the first two. So you would have to do, you know, at least one or two more summarizes if you wanted to peel off all of your grouping, or you could just use ungroup. Okay. So we calculated the counts for those words, like the word the shows up 3,291 times in neurology notes. Uh, and if we scroll down, we can see that the word the shows up 3,700 times in urology notes. We are also might be curious about the percentage of all words in neurology notes that constitute the word the. And so the reason that's important is because in neurology notes, the word the might show up 3291 times, but it's also very possible that we have more neurology notes than urology notes. So it may not be useful to compare counts uh, of the word the between neurology and urology. And so one thing we can do is calculate term frequency, where for each group we, see, we say, what percentage of all words that appear in that note type are the word the? And we can see that even though the counts are fairly similar, in neurology notes, the word the makes up almost 4% of all words because the term frequency is 0 0.039. And in urology notes, it makes up almost 8% of all words because the term frequency is uh, 0 0.078. So you've learned our first piece of jargon um, when it comes to trying to figure out which words are important, and that is term frequency. Because term frequency gives us a clue as to what might be important. And here we manually calculated that using the mutate function above, where we say term frequency equals n over some n. But we're going to learn about another way of calculating this without having to do it uh, by hand.